Hey, what's going on, everybody? John here at Havoc Maker Studio and FMP Wargamers. Welcome to the show. So yesterday I tried to put up a couple videos and it turns out that my microphone was not working. So I'm going to do a double, triple check here. Yes, sir. Babo, it is working. At least that's what that little gauge there going back and forth all hectic like means. All right. So enough of my country boy accent. Let's get into Atomic Mass Games and Marvel Crisis Protocol. So we're going to be doing a bunch of stuff today. I've got some reveals. And we've got, let's just go ahead and start right now with Panel to Play for The Amazing Spider-Man. Now some of you that are new to the game or have been thinking about it, you might be like, well, John, why are they now going over Spider-Man when he's already in the starter box? Well, this is another version of Spider-Man called The Amazing Spider-Man. And he is slightly different than the other one. So, and you'll, we've got like that right now with, I think, Black Widow is the only other model that's like that. So it's not like it's anything necessarily new. But I imagine we'll be seeing maybe another version of Captain America later on or Iron Man. Because, you know, these characters evolve. So this version of Peter Parker, the, the amazing Spider-Man, is a much older wiser still wisecracking superhero your friendly neighborhood spider-man so let's read over some of his abilities now this is just a glaze over if you're not familiar with panel to play it's just them kind of highlighting the abilities uh that we're going to be seeing probably in about i'm my guess in within the next couple weeks we'll see um a little bit more or we might have already seen his card at this point you know what i don't remember i don't think we've seen this card yet so I'm going to, I'm going to bank on that though. It's possible. So right here, it's uh, let's, let's looking at this. He's more capable of shrugging off superpower punches and energy blasts. That means more than likely his uh, physical defense and his energy defense are going to go up and he's got a bit more stamina. So that means he got another point or two of health. That's just kind of showing that as they're saying here, that, uh, he can he's learned to kind of take a take a hit <laughs> you know he's got it versus his younger self so he's a little bit more tougher a little bit more wiser he's got some experience so physically and mentally he's more prepared for it so that's cool now he's going to be a lot tougher he's already kind of a cool character to have and very inexpensive so i imagine he's going to go up maybe a point i well I, i'm gonna say he will go up a point possibly two Possibly. Anyways, let's get into his attacks. So we don't have too much information, so we're going to have to do some guesswork here. So his base first basic attack sounds like it's going to be a physical one, which makes sense. It's a spider strike, or it's called the spider strike. It uh, has a, a momentum special rule that lets Parker choose another target within range two of his initial one, may, moving him to within close range and dealing collision damage as he drops on them. So, what this is looking like to me is after you make that successful strike, and it might be, I'm hoping, if it's just not an automatic, you can bounce over to somebody else. I'm guessing or hoping it's going to be similar to Quicksilver. You have to roll certain uh, symbols on the eight-sided dice to, to be able to do the momentum attack. It might be something weird like, okay, you have to have a shield and a blank on top of all your other attack dice. And if you get that, then you can get the momentum, which likely means that you're going to move to another target within uh, range two, is my guess, range two, possibly range three. But I'm going to be conservative and go with range two, or, oh, it just says right there. Oh, no, it doesn't. It says uh, moving him within close range. My bad. The tar Choose another target within range two. Man, I just really tongue-tied myself there. So it is range two. I'm so smart. And he has another ability. And it looks like it's going to be his maybe one of his superpowers. Um, if he lands his attack after using the web swing power, which is probably going to cost one or two, probably one. I can see two, but probably one. Uh, the added momentum of swinging through the city lets him land the spider strike at strength seven. So it sounds like it's going to be 
the web swing power is going to you spend a power maybe two and you're going to get two dice worth of extra damage so it sounds like his spider strike is going to be a strength five attack that's my guess all right now it looks like his next power which is uh, her his next basic attack it's going to be probably a pricey power i'm going to guess three to four it's called whatever a spider can it is a strength eight beatdown, as they like to call it, that ends with Parker swinging clear of his target before using his webbing to hurl a dumpster at them. So my guess here, and you guys let me know in the comments below, is it sounds like it's going to be an eight dice attack, probably range three. And then afterwards, you will move him within, say, range, uh, let's say range three of a terrain piece that is or yeah terrain piece that's size two or less and you can throw it at a at an opponent that probably has to be within a certain range which is cool because between that and momentum when you have collision when you're when something collides with you you take damage and that's really cool because it's just a straight numerical value and damage and so you don't have to worry about rolling dice to see how much damage you do which i think is really cool so let me know what you think about that. Am I kind of right on the money there? So it's a strength eight attack or eight dice attack. Then move him with, after that, you move him within, say, range three. And of a, he has to be within like range three or medium range, something along that lines. And he can grab a size two or lower object, or not objective, but a terrain piece and hurl it at that same target. I think that's what it's going to be. Something similar. We'll see. Let me know what you think. So he has a couple other things. Um, he has a whole new set of responsibilities, you know, with great power and all. He is the leader to the Web Warriors. So he's going to be the second leader for the Web Warriors. The current leader is Miles Morales Spider-Man. So this version of Peter Parker, the amazing Spider-Man, will be the other leader. So we're starting to see that multiple leaders pop up four different factions. Right now, we see it with the Brotherhood of Evil Mutants and the X-Men. All right, so moving on, his uh, his leadership, Friendly Neighborhood Spider Team, lets Parker show his teammates how to put their webbing to best use, slowing a nearby target by entangling them up. So my guess there is that a target or a, a, an ally within range, whatever, Maybe not even within range, just an al or somebody that is a part of the team can spend some power and hit somebody maybe with a uh, stagger. I doubt stun, but maybe stagger. Uh, so they've got, you know, you're webbing them up. That's the only thing, unless they've got a new thing that, you know, roots people in place that I, maybe I've missed in the rules. I think maybe that's it. And then his other ability that looks like it's going to be called a witty banter. It's a reactive superpower. To let Spider-Man fire off a distracting quip, because he is very quippy. I know that's not a word, or is it? Uh, when anyone tries to attack a member of his team, giving him, Peter Parker, the ability to essentially force the attacker to re-roll one of the dice. Which doesn't sound like a lot, guys. And this probably is going to be a zero-cost power, but one dice roll in the attack can equal to it two successes and even popping off a secondary ability like stagger hex stun bleed so as an example let's say wolverine is just about to carve somebody up and he gets a couple hits and a lot of misses but he gets one of those dice ends up being a critical success which means you roll that dice again and i believe when you have the critical success or maybe it's the wild side well, well, we'll talk about Wild Side in a second. So that critical success, you can make him them make him re-roll that dice again, and hopefully it'll come up as anything but a uh, critical success. Hopefully it'll come up as a critical failure, or just a blank, or a shield. Something that's not going to be beneficial to Wolverine carving somebody up. Or, and I believe uh, Wolverine, if you hit somebody with your claw attack... And you get the wild symbol on the dice. I believe that causes bleed. So imagine, all right, he, he didn't get any critical successes, but he's going to cause bleed on poor 
uh, Miles Morales, which really sucks. Nobody wants to be bleeding their own blood. So you sit there and make him re-roll that dice. And now, hopefully, I mean, this is a gamble, mind you. <laughs> it's a big gamble because you could end up being a critical success, which would be end up being possibly two hits. So you, you got to be a little careful and kind of judge wisely. But, you know, it's if Miles can take the hit, then let him take the hit. If you know, I'll let you figure all that stuff out. So that's all we have right now for the amazing Spider-Man, uh, Peter Parker, the older, wiser version. But that's not all for the show. So let me hide this and let me pull up. We're going to go ahead and take a peek at Mr. Sinister, Quicksilver, and Scarlet Witch. We're, more importantly, we're going to take a look at their cards. So some people are, might be getting their models this weekend they might have already got their models or they're waiting so they but they want an idea of what comes in it so i've got mine and i figure let's go ahead and just kind of do a reveal on the tactics cards and the scenario cards just so you can have it in your brain pan so we're going to start with scarlet witch and quicksilver and hopefully i'm not going to get in trouble with Atomic Mass Games for revealing this right now. All right, so everybody should have seen on the website, on the Facebook page, or on one of my other videos, the, God dang it, would you just open? The cards for Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch. So we're not gonna review those right now. You can watch those videos. Just make sure you leave a, a like and a comment. So before, while I'm getting these cards ready, and fumbling around here go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below it really helps out the channel and we're here on havoc maker studio once we get to a hundred followers we're going to do our first giveaway which i just got some extra marvel christ protocol models to add to the prize pool for giveaways all right so let's take a look at these the best i can so research station attack this is a uh, it's an extraction mission so you're going to use map E. You're, it comes with a the box that comes with a researcher token, and you're going to be placing two evac points on the other points of map E. You're going to score. The player scores two victory points if they are securing the research researcher during the cleanup phase. Then a player scores two victory points if the researcher is within range one of their evac point so during the power phase the researcher may move if a player is securing the researcher they may place it within range two of its current position the evac point farthest from a player player's battlefield edge is their evac point so that means that the farthest from your edge so you can't just run them back to your lines you actually have to run them if i'm understanding this and i could be wrong jump down to uh, in the comments below and scream at me. That means you have to go to your opponent's evac point. The evac point farthest from a player's battlefield edge is their evac point. So if I'm reading that correctly, you've got to go to your point opponent's um, evac point. That's or the one that's closest to their their edge. If that makes sense. So the first card is no more mutants, which is a very terrifying phrase if you're. Uh, familiar with M Day in the Marvel comics when Scarlet Witch depowered all mutants, except for I think like uh, a few hundred. So, unaffiliated, it's reactive. When an enemy character within range five of an allied uh, Scarlet Witch spends one or more power to use a superpower or a reactive superpower, Scarlet Witch may spend three power to play this card. The enemy's superpower has no effect and cannot be used again for the rest of this turn. But that character is still going to spend the power and is going to be considered to be activated. So you could you can't try again. That's pretty cool. That's kind of pretty much locking up powers. We have the Whims of Chaos. It's an unaffiliated, active. Scarlet Witch may play uh, may spend any number of power to play this card. Choose one non dazed character within range three of Scarlet Witch for each power spent to play this card. Each chosen allied character may remove, all right, may remove 
one wound or one special condition. Each chosen enemy character gains one of the following. Hex, Root, or Incinerate. That's pretty nasty. Uh, we got Can I Borrow the, That? It's kind of cool power. It's a reactive. After an attack made by an allied Quicksilver, that damaged an enemy character holding an asset token is resolved, Quicksilver may spend two power to play this card. Move one asset token from the target character to Quicksilver. He picks it up and is now holding it, but um, the, char the card does not allow a character to hold more tokens than what's normally allowed, which makes sense. Uh, Brotherhood of Evil Mutants. It's Oh, this is for the, the, the affiliation. It's called Difficult to Please. Now, I thought this was really cool. If an allied Scarlet Witch was dazed or KO'd, or I'm sorry, if an allied... Scarlet Witch has dazed or KO'd an enemy character this round, and an allied Quicksilver has interacted with or picked up an objective token this round, Magneto may play this card. You may remove an activated token from Magneto, which, correct me if I'm wrong, means that you get to activate him immediately, and he gets to go at it all over again. That's kind of scary. That's pretty scary. So let's take a look at Nathaniel Essex, one of my favorite villains. Probably, I think he is in my top 10 villains. I think there's only like five villains, but he's in my top 10. So we've already seen Cloning Banks, um, and there's an FAQ out there. We've already seen Force Extraction, so we're not missing anything, or there's not nothing new there. So I'm not going to read these. Uh, those are on the Facebook page for Atomic Mass Games, and I did a video covering it. So... Let's take a look at the extraction mission. That's a 19 threat. Deadly legacy virus cured. I like how they're blending stuff from, I mean, that's, I think that's early 2000s that the legacy virus had kicked off, or maybe earlier or later. Um, anyway, setup. Place three legacy cures, assets, uh, as shown on map E. So we're using map E again. Scoring. A player scores one victory point for each legacy cure held by a character they control during the cleanup phase. Interact. Pick up a legacy cure. A character must spend one power for each legacy cure it is holding before using this interact. At the end of an, a character's activation, if it's holding one or more legacy cures, oh, okay, it may remove one special condition from itself. If at any time a character is holding all three, the character is immediately KO'd and is con and its controlling player scores eight victory points. Remove all the legacy cures from the game. Huh. That's kind of scary. Uh, don't be holding all three, I guess. So, I mean, that's uh, not too shabby. Not too shabby. Let's take a look at the tokens. Um, I don't know why they these cards are always so difficult to get out. I can hear my friend Escalante screaming as I'm tearing at the plastic and I'm bending the, the edges. All right, so take a look at these snazzy tokens. Ooh, Mr. We got the power tokens with Mr. Sinister. We've got, that's probably the legacy. Oh, wait, that's probably his cloning bank or his, what, what do you call those? Genetic extract, uh, genetic sample tokens, maybe. And then here's your cure tokens. Pretty cool. Pretty awesome there. I'm digging it. Uh, I'm going to dial it back. We're going to take a look at um, Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. So uh, we've got our two extraction points, which look like helicarriers. We have our researcher, and then we have a variety. We have got some innocent, in, um, what do you call it? Incinerate, I think that's a poison, judgment, hex, bleed. I'm not sure what that token right there is. Maybe somebody there might be able to yell at me. Uh, put it in the comments below, or I'll just have to look it up later. I'm not sure what that chain symbol is, but I'm sure it's something significant that has people yelling at, <laughs> yelling at me right now. So pretty cool. We can take a look at the miniatures as well, and then we're going to wrap this up. I'm already kind of happy about the Mr. Sinister. Um, I was worried about his cape. I'm trying not to break anything here. So his cape is actually going to be in two pieces that are going to be separate from his body. So I still have to look at the assembly, 
but I think we can get by with just assembling uh, or priming both capes, painting them separately, assembling them, and then adding them to his body. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, no extra bits, so we don't have to worry about extra back or pouches or heads and wondering why Atomic Mass Games decided to include all this extra stuff, which they do sometimes. Though I'm not complaining, not complaining. So I'm, I'm pretty happy. His sculpt looks really good, and I'm not seeing any major, anything that's going to be too difficult to paint except for the cape. But that's that's it. And then we'll take a look at Scarlet Witch. I'm not, I have not looked at the instructions on how to paint Scarlet Witch yet, but I'm already kind of seeing some slight difficulties. Sorry about the noise. The stuff falls all over the place. So Quicksilver, I think is going to be fairly easy. Um, that he's going to be easy to assemble and I don't think I have to do any sub assemblies, which is always a plus when you're painting miniatures. Now let's get to the chaotic nature of Scarlet Witch. Um, I think we're going to have three sub assemblies here. This is me thinking, me, me personally thinking, uh, one will include her body and then it looks like her head and cape will, will be a separate one as that it's all one piece that'll sit on her magnificently shaped <laughs> torso and, uh, upper chest region. And then we've got her whole chaos swirly thing that she's floating around in. So that will probably be separate, uh, separately painted as well. And then we'll slide her in. Looks like it'll be very easy to slide her in there. Um, might be definitely have to wait for the paint to dry. Cause I think her looking at the box. Yeah. Her one hand will come up behind this, uh, right side hex sphere or circle. And then the left hand will come up behind the other one. It looks like there might even be a spot where a finger or a thumb is going to clamp down on. So it's, I think she's going to be in a sub assembly for three parts, probably three part sub assembly for Mr. Sinister. And then Quicksilver will be all by himself. Poor guy. But you know what? He's pretty simplistic. Uh, he's just really fast. Um, and so he doesn't have all sorts of weird powers floating around, flying around his head and all that jazz. So I hope you got something of value out of this. Uh, tonight, it looks like we are going to be painting Mr. Sinister on the live stream. So uh, twitch.tv slash Havocmaker Studio, just like the name says. And we'll be doing that at about 7, I think 7 p.m. Central Time. Yeah, uh, in about four, about three hours. So if you want to join us and you have some questions about painting or you just want to see what what it looks like painted and assembled go ahead and join me anyways you guys have yourself a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend be safe and let me know what you guys think about uh, my interpretation of some of this stuff what you think about the cards and please definitely i know you guys kind of get tired of uh being on youtube channels and coming here sometimes and we constantly are like hey hit that subscribe button but it helps our business grow. By helping our channel grow, that means it helps our business grow, which means I can give back to you guys. So hit that subscribe button. If you're here on Havoc Maker Studio, jump over to FMP Wargamers. The link is down in the description and hit subscribe over there. FMP Wargamers, guys, you're over there. Get that description for this studio and go ahead and hit Havoc Maker Studio up with a subscribe. I really appreciate it. Definitely leave a comment. I'd like to know what you guys are thinking about this stuff. You guys, once again, have a great weekend. I'll talk to you guys on Monday.